carbon far farming, where does the voucher program fit in a carbon farming journey? So this is a graphic which looks at why most people are looking to be involved in carbon farming. So we've got drivers. What are the drivers of a carbon, the carbon farming industry at the moment? Some of that's self-determined, some of that's market driven. There has been uh, a few examples recently, particularly in the grain industry. We had 10,000 tonnes of carbon neutral grain um, sold by uh, CBH recently. So whatever your driver is, um, that's wanting you to be involved in this. Um, that's, you know, there are multiple drivers. So when it comes to feasibility of carbon farming, you can self-fund that. Um, you might have a service provider that wants to go into partnership with you, or there's us here at Deeper with this nice little government voucher that we've got. Um, so that's where it fits. If you do a carbon farming plan, you, um, you then go and you might implement, manage report, and then you close your project off. Those are things that are beyond the scope of what we are, are talking about today. We are purely talking about our voucher program. So what is it and what's on offer? So the Carbon Farming for Voucher program is to support you as farmers to make sound investment decisions around carbon farming, and it's also building the knowledge and capacity um, of the WA carbon uh, farming industry. We want to build a robust industry that has ground support. Farmer are our farmers are our focus, um, and that's we are looking to build that industry basically from the ground up with farmers. So the vouchers that are available are very specific to your property. We're calling it a carbon farming plan and it's for soil or uh, uh, vegetation-based activities um, related to carbon sequestration. So the funding available is up to $15,000 with a 20% cash contribution uh, from the farmer or producer and that maximum contribution is 20%. So uh, just $3,000 is the maximum. If you only utilise $10,000 of your potential voucher, then it's $2,000. So it's a 20% uh, co-contribution up to a maximum of three. So what that is looking at is you're ultimately going to get XGST 18,000 and roughly just under 20,000 is a total voucher. So farmers will work with their choice of one or more a carbon service provider, an agro, uh, agribusiness business agronomist, a financial advisor, an environmental consultant, a legal advisor, or a combination of all of those. And we'll talk a little bit about how the combination works later on. The advice is to plan and assess feasibility of carbon farming on your property. Um, assess the cost and return on the investment of a potential carbon farming project and allow you to understand the opportunities, obligations, and risks of a carbon farming project. Anyone who has potentially been to one of our workshops that we've done around the state um, regarding carbon farming, you, there is quite some um, red tape in terms of government that you need to get through. And while it's not onerous, it can be complicated. And it's why we've devised this program to allow you to have the best possible chance of putting a successful carbon farming project on your farm. So it's a great opportunity. This is my rah-rah statement. Yeah, it's a really fantastic opportunity for those farmers who are at their carbon farming journey for them to be able to, you can see that, Craig, yeah. uh, sorry, for you to be able to get the information that you require to start your carbon farming journey. If you don't have any idea of what carbon farming, you're mostly not at the right spot. That's kind of start zero point. But this $15,000 grant is a great little grant and a great little program. There are limited options to access funding like this in WA um, to undertake a carbon uh, farming feasibility study. And we really encourage you, if you are interested in this, to uh, put through an application at the end of this process. We'll talk about that throughout. And similar um, programs are offered in other states with less money, and Julia will talk about that. It's working out, Julia. It's fine. So who can apply? And how? So you have to be an uh, owner of a farming property based in the South West Land Division and operating a primary business, a production business. 
the how is pretty simple. We administer all our grants within DPIRB through our Smarty Grants. The Smarty Grants um, application uh, is a web-based application that's pretty easy. The questions are dropped down and they have choices and it gives you the opportunity to upload your preferred quote. Um, we'll talk a little bit about um, uh, the quote process, but please note, we do not select the quotes for you. You select that, that quote. And also there's a preview of the application in a PDF, which um, you can see the blue highlighted link there, which is effectively, you can look at that application without any obligation, without having to have a login to Smarty Grants to see whether you want to actually go through this process. So I'm going to pass over to Julia now and she'll take you through what's different from round one. Thanks everyone again. I just wanted to take the opportunity to say thank you for your time. Um, we actually planned this uh, webinar close to lunch. We were hoping you might be making your way in from the paddock and we hope to get you back out there soon. Um, just moving on, um, so what's different to round one? Um, there's been an increase from the first round um, from $10,000 up to $15,000, um, which is fantastic news. We've gone up at an extra 50%. Um, based on some industry from feedback, um, the advice from our service providers was that $10,000 was too low a price given the complexity of the content and also the time taken to deliver a plan. Um, so industry said to us that that was too marginal and so therefore um, we've taken that feedback on and increased the price. Um, the other thing that we did hear from both farmers particularly and uh, some providers alike was that when, uh, when the cash co-contribution is too low, it's a little bit close to free money. So in round one, uh, we only had a 10% co-contribution, so it was only a $1,000 cash co-contribution was required. And what we found was sometimes that obviously farms got a heavy workload and that perhaps sometimes um, they didn't have enough skin in the game really to actually fully commit um, to working with a provider. So, um, so yes, yeah, so that's some key differences from round one, but the good news is the interest has gone, the funding available has gone up. Um, so what is the funding available for? We've touched on that very much to produce a carbon farming plan specific to your property. Um, when we're talking more broadly in the community, people are very interested in greenhouse gas emissions calculations for their farm. We acknowledge that's a really important piece of work and we encourage people to go out and understand that if you're not doing that already. There's lots of tools out there available. DPAD has some in that space. But if this particular grant, this grant is very much about carbon sequestration projects. And so um, for this round, uh, on-farm emissions calculations is not part of this program. Um, so just wanted to touch a little bit on uh, the advice types that are available. So as Andrew said, most people are generally looking for carbon specific content. However, within the program, you can get legal, financial, agronomic, or environmental advice as it specifically relates to developing a carbon farming uh, plan. Um, so the little, the little fella on the side there, the sort of tongue in cheek joke there is that um, what we really need is people to be looking at advice that is different to business as usual. So what we're not looking, not we're, what we're not interested in this program is your annual agronomic plan. What we're looking for is if you're getting those legal, financial, environmental or uh, agronomic advice about carbon farming, you need to explain how that fits into your overall farm. So it needs to be different to business as usual. So the joke there is that, you know, we're not really interested in seeing your succession plan and how you want to get the brother-in-law off the title. It really needs to be specific about carbon farming. Um, and within the application form, um, there's space for you to upload anything or explain how those four different, those four different advice types are required for your property. So we've given you the opportunity to upload anything that helps you support your request. Um, so we encourage you to do that if you can. Uh, but as we said, most people generally are looking for really particular carbon farming advice, but we want this to be a really useful program, which is why we've got those other advice types. So just moving on more broadly to the timeframes around carbon farming program. Um, uh, as you may know, the program's been open for two weeks now. Um, we It closes on the 29th of September, so there's only three weeks left. So we encourage you, if you haven't already, to maybe crack on and have a bit of a look at it. Um, the next part of the program is the assessment and 
announcement part. So we've given two months for that time frame. Um, we're very uh, cognizant that harvest is coming up, people are preparing already, and that after that everyone's going to want to go on holidays. So we have got, uh, we're really wanting to get on and uh, assess the applications very quickly and make that announcement before harvest. What providers have told us is that they need some time before people go into harvest. So what we're wanting to do as soon as these applications close on the 29th of September is, is to hit rubber hit the road really quickly with uh, the assessment and make those announcements as soon as we can. Uh, this is public money. There is governance around it. We do need to go through the motions, but we very much do want to get this out there as quick as possible just to give people that little window of time to work with their provider. One of the things that the providers have said to us is that they need to have some time with farmers to understand what data they need to get from you to kick that carbon farming plan off. Um, we do know that, um, you know, there'll be a, a couple of months after holidays before you get into seeding for those of you in the broadacre uh, game. And so, again, you know, we know that you've got heavy seasonal workloads. So that's why we've gone to a, a nine months. So from the time we announced, we're giving everyone nine months to get the carbon farming plan done. So overall, it's a 12 month program. So that's just a bit of an idea about the time frame. Okay, so what do you need to do? So Firstly, if you don't have a service provider, it's, it's very important that you do engage a service provider. The service provider will ultimately be the one responsible for writing your carbon farming plan. But if you don't have one, DPIRD has a service provider directive um, and it includes questions to help you guide, um, guide you in choosing a service provider. It's also got um, the uh, services that each provider has what location they're in and what organisations that they might be um, affiliated with or members of. Now, we have some of our service providers must be um, part of uh, a member of a certain organisation and those are listed within the program guidelines. There are others that we recommend. For instance, our carbon service providers, it's not compulsory for them to be a member of the um, a signatory to the uh, Carbon Code of Conduct, but we um, absolutely recommend that they are. But it doesn't necessarily mean um, that they're not going to be able to provide a good service. It's just a recommended um, membership. Secondly, you need to get quotes. So your service provider will need to provide you a quote of work. We're, we're doing the quotes before um, you uh, apply this time. So we have a clear understanding, uh, both you and us um, have a clear understanding of what it is you're actually getting. And those quotes, um, we'll talk a little bit in more detail about that in a minute. Any information that's specific for your uh, application, please upload it. We keep harping on about that, but please upload that um, application specific information to uh, enable us to do an assessment of your application in its fullness. I'll talk a little about that. One of the questions that we got for those people that were registering um, for this uh, webinar was can I reopen my form before the closing date? Absolutely you can if you submitted your form but you realise that you need to make some changes, you want to add something else, contact us through that email, we can then reopen it and then you'll be able to go and edit um, and resubmit. If you've ever got any issues, email that um, uh, email address or there's a number on the program guidelines that actually goes direct to my phone number and if I'm out of office, it will get redirected to either my mobile, Julia's mobile, or one of the other team members' mobiles that can help you um, along the way. Service providers are a must for this program. So some key questions in the application. So firstly, what's your property size? We've also had the question, how big does my property size need to be? We're not limiting any property sizes, but generally carbon farming projects will need to be a certain size depending on the productivity or the type of project that you're going to um, look at. Um, vegetation um, projects, for instance, we kind of look at a minimum size of about 200 hectares, but soil can be uh, slightly variable. But it doesn't matter if you've got a small property. Put your application in with all the information and we can assess that. What enterprise activities are you? Crop, livestock, horticulture, combination of all of those let us know within the app. These are key questions in the application. These next two questions are most probably two of the most important questions for the application. Why do you want to apply 
and how does the carbon farming plan fit within your business goals? These must be answered by you as the farmer. We want to know why you want to apply and how that carbon farming plan will fit within your business goals. We'll talk a little bit about assessment, but these are key assessment matrix, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But make sure you answer those questions and not your service provider. And then there's just some questions about your understanding and intentions for carbon farming. And again, that's just what do you, what is your understanding and what do you intend to do if you were to get a carbon farming um, voucher? What might be your intentions going forward? The type of advice you want, do you only want carbon service advice or do you want legal? Do you want financial? It gives you the opportunity to nominate those and then provide the extra information. And what interactions you've had with your service provider or your ser service providers thus far? Again, it's just about giving us as much information as possible and then the dollars that you're requesting. Are you requesting the full 15000 or is it a lesser amount? So using more than one provider type, there is the opportunity for you to use more than one provider type if you've got multiple needs for the advice that you want within your carbon farming plan. So if you're using a combination of all of the advice, uh, advisor types, carbon, financial, environmental, economic or legal, you need to nominate a lead provider. Um, that lead provider will coordinate the carbon farming plan and all the advice from the other um, advisors, upload all the quotes from the all the provider types. Now, your lead provider might do that coordination for you, and we've got a couple of our um, service providers that are offering that combined service, but ensure that your lead provider agrees to be the lead provider. We've already had an application come in from someone who, when I spoke to the, uh, the advisor, they didn't even know they put the application in it yet at this point. So make sure, and we'll touch on this, that your uh, provider agrees to be that lead provider. Um, versus if you only want one provider, for instance, it's just a carbon service provider, they'll put their information in and just upload the one quote. And that's pretty simple. It depends on what your needs are, but there are those two varieties of advice combination or one only. So the assessment process. This, the applications will be assessed against the eligibility requirements. So again, I, I, I please, if you're gonna put an application, read those eligibility requirements. One of the eligibility requirements is you can't have received a voucher in round one. And we've also already had someone who received a voucher in round one looking to get a voucher in round two. And we've had to say, sorry, no. So read those eligibility requirements pretty closely. The merits of the application and the um, the attachments, including the quote. So those two questions I was talking about, they are very important in um, assessing your merits. And the quotes over here on the right hand side that you can see, um, that is the quote guidelines within the program guidelines, and that outlines what it is that we are looking for in the quality um, uh, to produce quality quotes that you will then upload. So we will be looking at those quotes very carefully. We have a panel um, that will be making the decision and we will have a final meeting where we will um, inform the program service, uh, the program decision maker and what our recommendations are. And then once uh, we've made that decision, we will inform all of our applicants within one month of round closure. But as Julia talked about before, we will do that as fast as we can because of those constraints on um, harvest and then going on holidays. Um, and the vouchers will be issued within two months of that closing date. And we're hoping to speed that up. Now, I've just realised I've actually talked about uh, Julia's section, so I'll hand her over to Kate Hughes now. That's OK. Look, I think uh, Andrew covered it. Um, again, just making sure that when you get your quote from your provider or your Providers, that it looks sound, um, that you understand what your provider is actually, uh, the services that they are actually providing. Um, and as Andrew discussed, if you can go and have a look at the back end of the program guidelines to see what we're looking for, that would be great. Um, so just some frequently asked questions. Um, I think we've probably um, brought home the key points, but one in there which you might have noticed is about aggregated projects. So with regards to aggregated projects, most projects um, in Australia in carbon credits are registered with the Clean Energy Re Regulator, the federal government. So just a quick touch on that. So under this program, you can uh, submit an aggregated project with other parties. Um, as part of that, just to explain aggregation, 
It's where activities that use the same method, so that's either vegetation or soil-based activities, bring about carbon abatement. And those, those abatement activities are formed into one project um, and it can be undertaken by individuals or organisations. So if you did want to get an aggregated project with other parties, um, each applicant in the aggregation needs to be eligible and DPIRD will look at aggregations on a case by case and decide on what total funding amount. So if you do have an aggregation, perhaps you might want to email or phone us just to talk it through, but it is allowed. So those people that have nominated this small um, uh, hectare, you might be able to aggregate with other small hectare properties within your area to be able to then have a project that comes under one project, but an aggregated um, registration with the CER going forward, if that was what you chose to do. And just another one with regards to a um, uh, new thing in this round. So the idea about, uh, again, Andrew touched on it, about having a lead provider is that if you do go and get, say, for example, some legal advice and some environmental advice, you just say hypothetically nominate your environmental advisor to be your lead uh, lead uh, provider. The idea about that is that all of that information comes in together in the one document. What we don't want is you as a recipient having a piece of legal advice over here sitting aside from the environmental advice and not talking to each other. So that's why we've gone down the line this round of actually nominating uh, or self-nominating a lead provider. So um, resources that are help. So we've touched on these program guidelines as per any other public funding. Um, this is kind of the rule book for what is and isn't allowed in within the round. It talks about eligibility, eligible activities, who can and can't apply. It really gets into the nitty gritty. Um, not the most exciting read ever, but an important read nonetheless. Um, we do have a frequently asked questions. Um, we've hopefully we've touched on a few of those, but you may want to look at that. And again, the service provider directory of self-nominated providers. Um, People, uh, providers come to DPIRD, we have a form online that um, any service provider can come to us and nominate their activities. And so that's where you can go if you don't have anyone already lined up. And moving on to the next thing, um, this is a document that we've developed, um, Carbon Farming Plan Guidance Document. And the purpose of this document is to help when you're working with your providers. Um, depending on what your knowledge is. We pulled together this document because it's got lots of resources in it and it should help you step through what key areas you should touch on in a carbon farming plan. It very much focuses on, on focuses in on carbon, not so much the legal financial side of things. It does touch on those as they relate to registering and starting a project, but you may want to use this document when you're working with your provider to help you understand the key steps of doing a carbon farming plan. We set the document out in four sections. Um, things to consider before starting a carbon farming plan. Um, so that might be that you need to understand who needs to be involved within your business entity in a carbon farming project. Moving on to developing a carbon farming plan. Again, the things that you should consider and perhaps inclusions in your carbon farming plan. So we would strongly recommend that you look at that because when you get your carbon farming plan back, if you're missing some of the key things in those areas, you might want to um, talk to your provider about that. Um, moving on, the next bit of the document talks about um, if you actually, when rubber hits the road and you actually want to do a carbon farming project, what the activities involved in that and the ongoing management of a project. And then also after a carbon farming plan has been done, what do you need to think about? So we think this document will be useful to anyone inside the voucher program or outside the voucher program. It's very much been developed as a guidance document. It's not a template. Um, we want to see for the uh, money that's available, what we really don't want is carbon service providers picking up this document and doing cut and paste. It is there as guidance, but it really is there to help farmers become a bit more skilled in what you should have in your document. So I think moving along, that's most of the key documents and resources that are available. And Andrew will talk about, should you be a successful recipient, some of the things you need to know. So hopefully everybody here is going to put in an application and you will become successful. So some of the housekeeping is the requirement, we will just ask, we're not going to make it compulsory, but we would ask that people that attend a, an online grant readiness session just so that you can get some more detail about what's required. We'll cover the program requirements, time uh, frames and resources available to deliver their project. 
One of the key feedbacks that we got from our service providers from round one, that one of the uh, limitations in getting the uh, um, carbon farming plans done in a timely fashion was that the farmers didn't always have the required data and information um, ready to go. And we understand that you've got lots of commitments, but what uh, we will be um, getting a list together, we're um, getting our carbon service providers and our other service providers to get a list of documents ready for us so we can have a checklist for you as a successful applicant to be able to go, yep, I've got this document, this document, this document ready. Um, and then you can work um, collaboratively with your carbon or your service provider to make sure that all the information is ready to go before you six, quite rightly go on a very well-deserved holiday after harvest. Um, we really encourage that you have regular conversations with your provider. Those of you who are looking at um, applying, um, have, a, have a conversation with your um, potential provider now to see whether they are involved um, uh, in whether they're involved in round one. There's been some of the service providers have sent out um, flyers regarding this program. Um, if you don't have one, maybe have a conversation with one about whether it's worth while you are putting in an application. But regular conversations post and pre are important. Um, we'll check in with farmers and the providers across the life of the program and we'll have regular emails and check in to make sure that everybody um, is fully aware of what's happening. Um, we will send, if you're a successful applicant, we will send you and your service provider an email. We want to avoid what happened last time where we had some farmers who received uh, a successful notification that they had received a, a grant but didn't then tell their um, service provider for some months later that they actually had a grant and it put them behind the eight ball and ultimately quite a few of those farmers then had to withdraw. So we will let everybody know what's going on at key um, irregular points throughout. This is a competitive process. We were massively oversubscribed last time, 250% uh, oversubscribed. We want as many people to apply as possible. We don't mind the workload, but it is a competitive process. So again, we encourage you to do um, quality, get quality quotes and answer those questions when the, within the assessment so that you are very, 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 very well prepared to get a, a voucher. Um, Andrew, can I just say, yeah. um, uh, even though there's lots of chat today, the uh, the application form is quite simple um, and as long as if you've got those quality quotes, we think you'll find it a relatively easy process to go through. Just another thing to point out, um, and this program has been quite a, a good one, um, but we are unsure what um, the future holds in terms of um, funding available, so we don't know if there'll be around the three of this program, so if you do think this is for you, we would encourage you to have a go. So. Just another program that we have that um, has a larger pool of funds. Um, there is funding a, a, a lot. We have $2.15 million of funds for our carbon farm land restoration program, which is that next phase after we've got feasibility, our planning, then the implementation. So we do have that um, available and we our round three of that will be available in um, February of next year. So. We had round one recipients of vouchers um, go into round one. We're looking at um, most of the con where we are contacting all of our round, uh, remaining round one recipients to go into whether they're willing to go into the carbon farming land restoration program round two. Um, but there is other funding available after this voucher program that if you want to um, continue with this carbon farming journey, you can. There is no obligation. Let me make it very clear. If you get a voucher and you get a carbon farming plant, there is no obligation for you to go any um, any of those next steps. You don't have to go into the implementation. You can you can then go off and sell fund. You can go to a, a service provider. You could go with a, um, a carbon aggregator, whatever it is, but there is no obligation for you to do anything after um, receiving a voucher and getting a carbon farming plant but we do have that funding available. So let's just recap. Designed to help you undertake a feasibility of the assessment of the carbon farm within your enterprise. You need to find a provider. You need to get quotes. You need to submit a great application that has those quotes attached. Contact us if you've got any issues. If you um, do develop a carbon plan, carbon farming plan, as I just said, there's no obligation to keep going. 
our goal is to try and get as many carbon farming um, projects in the um, Southwest Land Division as possible. But the key part of this program is getting you to have a feasibility um, plan for your farm. If you go on through and progress through the carbon farming project, um, we can help you understand the key aspects of to register and implement and manage that project outside or inside the CFLRP as well. Okay, so questions. We haven't had anybody type any questions into the chat function, but if you've if anyone would like to ask a question now, maybe you could just uh, use the raise hand and we can unmute you. Um, so up in the top of Teams, if you're using Microsoft Teams, you'll see there's a raise hand. So if you want to put your hand up. Um, no questions? Or type it into the chat function if you've got a question. Everyone wants to apply. <laughs> oh, there we go. We've got my question. Okay. I'll unmute you, Andrew. Well, oh, I can't. Can you unmute them for me, please? I've, I've, I've lost. Oh, there we go. Yep. Can you hear me? Okay. Yep, we can hear you. Um, we applied for one last time around and missed out. Yep. Um, does that give me any sway to getting the next one or? Sorry, because does it give you any sway? Um, yeah. Do you want me to answer that? Uh, no. Okay. no. No, it doesn't. But it doesn't preclude you or give you any better chance. We, we have a process that we're governed by in terms of our government um, grant processes and no, neither friend nor favour basically from having a previous application, uh, we consider all applications on their merit as they come in. I think um, to Andrew, just further onto that, if you would like to reach out to us and talk to us about um, what it is that you're doing before, we're more than welcome to take any questions. You know, we obviously need to be a little bit careful about, about being unbiased and providing any unfair advantage, but we're more than happy to take questions um, before you start that application process, um, if, if that helps. Um, we'll have further contact details available. Um, I might just answer the one in from Alex, one about can the voucher program be used for water quality assessment for vegetation? I think that's a, a lot of things that people want to do are a little bit case by case. I think that's a really good example of where someone might want some environmental advice. 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 Um, um, I might just get to mute. Mute. Thanks. Um, so that's a good example of where someone might want some environmental advice uh, as it specifically relates to developing a carbon farming plan. So I think that's a really good example of where if you can upload anything to support your request for that particular advice as it relates to developing a carbon farming project, we would look at that. However, if it sits very much outside and it's got no clear link to developing a carbon farming plan, well, then it's unlikely to be eligible. Hey, Nicole, I've seen your question. Um, no, because ultimately we don't know what your sequestration is on your farm before you do the plan. So essentially you're just putting in why am I, why do I want to do this? How does it fit into my business? The idea is for you to get feasibility to make that decision as to whether a carbon farming plan is suitable for your property, whether the economics stack up. So no. We're not, we're not making an assessment on just because you might be up in Yuna and, and what is uh, traditionally a low sequestration area for vegetation, um, that we won't know that at application. The, the carbon farming plan is there to inform you of that very piece of information. I'll just, I'll just find you and unmute you. Uh, it's went past you. Does that help, Nicole? Oh, didn't. I right, got a thumbs up, Beauty. Thank you. Okay. Go back to that. Any other questions? Oh, sorry, we had. Um, sorry, it was. 
We had Alex. Answered Alex. Oh, oh, we've answered Alex's question. Rightio, Roger that. No more questions? Sorry, my apologies. Okay, so the, the last bit is, is we will be sending a short uh, survey for all the participants today just to give some feedback on this session. Um, we will be sending out the PDF uh, version of this. Those QR codes there, um, you can either take a, a picture of that on the screen now or when you get this uh, PDF, that will take you to the Carbon for Farmer Voucher Program website. It'll also take you, the second one takes you to the Carbon Farming and Land Restoration Program, which is the overarching program that I was talking about previously. And it also for you to sign up um, and keep updated on carbon farming events and information. Any more last questions? Really thank everybody for your time. We understand how busy everybody is. Our meet has put the link to the survey monkey in the uh, chat function on the right hand side. Um, so if you could push that and do that short two minute survey now, that would we really appreciate it. We um, thank you for your time and hope to see uh, all the applications in as soon as possible.